Greetings, dear friends. Welcome to worship. I imagine you've been blessed as I've been blessed this week by the inspirational way your pastor, my son Matt, has led us in worshiping during Holy Week. Yesterday was Good Friday. Jesus died on Friday. The next day, Saturday, was a terrible day for those who love Jesus. It was a day of sorrow and numbing bewilderment. God was silent on Saturday. Jesus' dead body lay in a dark, cold tomb. Hope had been swallowed up in sadness. Before the scattered disciples could celebrate the glory of the resurrection on Sunday, they had to endure the silent agony of Saturday. Try to imagine how the disciples felt. The voice of Jesus had been stilled, and his father was silent. Jesus was dead. His life a failure. His dream, their dreams, had ended in disaster. We all know what those silent Saturdays feel like when death has claimed someone we loved. Numb with paralyzing grief, we hear nothing from God, and we wall in despair. I remember the heartbreaking Saturday after our son David died. God was silent, and we felt helpless and abandoned by the very God we'd prayed so fervently to. But God did not leave us in the sadness of silent Saturdays. Saturday had to give way to Sunday. And Sunday brings hope to restore our souls. God speaks again. He pours his love in our hearts and breaks the hold of sorrow. Sunday symbolizes the coming of God to wipe away our tears, to comfort us with his strengthening presence, and galvanize our faith to believe in the resurrection. Somehow we find a way to handle the harsh silence of Saturday because Sunday is coming. During my journey, I've known men and women who refuse to allow silent Saturdays to rob them of their faith. My friend Nathan Hamilton was such a man. As a young man, Nathan fell in love with Jesus. He devoted his life to Jesus, using his gifted voice to bless others. As much as any person I've ever known, Nathan was an authentic servant of Jesus Christ. Nathan was not a preacher, but he was sold out for Jesus. He supported his family by repairing chairs, but he did more than fix chairs. He repaired souls while he was repairing chairs in hundreds of homes while working on a chair for a customer. He would quietly ask permission to sing a song for the homeowner. Many of were so blessed they'd invited him to sing another song. And while some of them were wiping away tears, Nathan would continue praising his Lord Jesus and song. Nathan's body died in January 2017, victim of a glioblastoma tumor. But those of us who loved him did not lose him because we know where he is. No one is lost if you know where they are. After a year of heartbreaking suffering, Nathan ran ahead of us to the Father's house where he now sings in the greatest choir in the universe. During the last chapter of his life, about seven years, Nathan served as worship leader for traditional worship at St. James United Methodist Church where I had the honor of being the traditional pastor. What an honor was mine to serve alongside Nathan as he directed our choir and led our congregation in worship every Sunday. We miss him. And we remain grateful for the way his singing touched our hearts, for the wonderful way he led people to worship our Savior. I miss Nathan, especially at Easter time. Every Easter, Nathan walked into the sanctuary at the end of my sermon and sang the inspiring song, He's Alive. The song is a testimony of the Apostle Peter. In the song, Peter tells about his dreadful Saturday, how he'd been unable to sleep, rising at every sound, with fear and sorrow gripping him. He hears the gate rattling, hears a voice calling. He goes to the door and finds Mary, who breathlessly tells him she's been to Jesus' grave, found the stone rolled away, and the tomb empty. As Nathan continues the story and song, he has Peter saying that he assumed a miracle had occurred, but he could not embrace the idea 
for he had seen them crucify him. Uh, he saw him die. Peter then sings of the guilt and shame of denying that he ever knew Jesus' name. But the song turns for us with the word suddenly. Hear the words. Suddenly, the air was filled with a strange and sweet perfume. Life came from everywhere, drove shadows from the room. And Jesus stood before me with his arms held open wide. And I fell down on my knees and just clung to him and cried. Then he raised me to my feet. And as I looked into his eyes, the love was shining out for him like sunlight from the skies. Guilt in my confusion disappeared in sweet release. And every fear I ever had just melted into peace. What marvelous words those are. And then with passion and power, Nathan's voice erupted into the precious words. He's alive. Yes, he's alive. Yes, he's alive. And I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. Yes, he's alive. Oh, he's alive. And I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are opened wide. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, he's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. He's alive. I believe it. He's alive, sweet Jesus. <laughs> Nathan's with the Lord now. But my memory of his voice and his love for Jesus allows my soul to be enriched many times. I know I'll see Nathan again. And then with a perfected voice, I'll join with him in singing praise to Jesus. In the meantime, I'll keep on telling all who will listen that Jesus truly is alive. And because he's alive, the gates of heaven open wide to all who choose to follow him. Death could not keep him in the ground. He's alive. Believe that and you're only two steps away from peace with God. The first step is to believe he's alive. Believe that he alone can turn the sadness of Saturday into the joy of a life-changing Sunday. The second step is to accept his forgiveness so you can be ready to walk through the wide open gates of heaven. Right now, this very minute, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead can give life to your mortal body and make you alive to God. He's alive. And because he is, the gate to heaven is open wide. God bless you, dear friends. May you get through this silent Saturday and welcome the resurrection morning, Easter day. He's alive. Glory. Hallelujah. He's alive. Glory. Hallelujah. God bless you. Happy Easter. <laughs>